Hey everyone, and welcome to our podcast. This is Champorado coming at you live from the internet. Before we start, we just want to say that the jokes we make are not meant to hurt or discriminate against anyone. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and we should love one another for our own individualism. We live in a cruel, unadulterated world during abnormal times, and the only way for us to get through it is with humor. Thanks for listening to our project, and thanks for vibing. Enjoy. Yo, 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 what's up? Welcome to What's Cooking in the Kitchen with Brown Sugar, also known as BS, and your host, John Parado. Handle in the heat so you don't have to. Today, we have a spicy topic that seems to be dominating our culture and can kill our game or revive it. We're talking hair, haircuts, and maintenance. We also have a special guest that we'll be inviting uh, that can give us a woman's perspective on the topic. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, welcome to the first episode of What's Cooking in the Kitchen with Brown Sugar and Champorago. Hope you guys are staying safe during quarantine season. But today, as you know, we're talking about haircuts. And uh, I ain't gonna lie, quarantine has really messed up my ability to get a haircut, like, in oh, general. Oh, God, bro. <laughs> when was the last time you got a haircut, bro? Okay, so I went out to... I went out to to a specific location that I can't specify, but I went out to uh I went out to the desert um to see one of my friends because his barber is pretty clean. He just you know uh, lineups are kind of hard, but you know uh he be doing pretty good work. So I went out to go see him in June as soon as the as soon as we entered wave two or stage two of this whole quarantine. Well, that uh, man made it just the time. Oh yeah, that but man it's still. Yeah, but it's like mid July, and you know my sideburns are growing back, and I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like this. <laughs> you think you struggling, bro? You think you struggling? Guess from the last time it was since I got a haircut, bro. Just guess. Uh, uh, I don't know what, like March, right before this went down. You remember that concert that we had back at school on yeah, Valentine's yeah. Day? February fourteenth. <laughs> You told me Valentine's Day was the last time you got a haircut. That was the only other time I needed to, bro. I said, hey, I'm going to look nice every other day. You know, <laughs> That's when the pandemic hit. There was no time. I said, this listen, mess. <laughs> there's nobody to fade me up in the city that I live in, bro. I was like, hey, we just going to have to struggle a little bit. Thought the barbershops was going to open back up. They didn't. And, well, <laughs> here I am, you know, looking a little dusty. This man went full J. Cole. He said, oh, hey, we, <laughs> I got the war braids to... going on. The battle <laughs> braids. Hey, but that's some natural stuff. I mean, because of, like, my hair texture and, like, my genetics, I can't really do that. Uh, but, you know, you live in the best. You live in your best life. You're doing, you doing well. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to, man. I'm like, this is tough out here, but we're going to make it work. But, uh, yeah, we... shoot, man. Yeah, we're going we gonna to make it work. Um, so I guess a next question or a next thing to talk about would be like our our, our haircut styles, man. Because I know from back in the day, my, my haircut styles has evolved uh, exponentially. You know what I'm saying? Oh, most definitely. Bro, did you uh did you start off with like every young black kid's haircut, which was like the Skeeter head, bro? <laughs> did you start off yeah. Skeeter head, bro? Bro, I swear, every single, since ninth grade, or no, since like tenth grade, I've been just the guard all the way up. Just yeah, you feel me? <laughs> Completely. I look like a whopper, bro. Like some little chocolate <laughs> whoppers, bro. That's what my head shape was, bro. I hey, said I, I was like your cut, G. On God, <laughs> wow. You know, you feel me? And the worst part was that my head has like this is why I always wear my hair out. It's got like a slight little dupe in it, like at the top. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up the eyebrows and nobody could see it. So I'm like, yo, every time I had the skeeter, it would just show. And they'd be like, yo, why you got that little divot? And I was like, listen, man. I was, 
I was struggling. <laughs> so okay, well, I feel that to to an extent. Um, growing up, I had I, yeah, I had the skeeter. Um, mm. but my dad had this little, my dad had this little uh, deal with me. He said, "All right, during the summer, you you got to get the skeeter cut, and I got to yeah. cut it myself. Like like you got to have, you know." you got to have like no hair that, you know, you got to do it right. Um, and I was like, all right, dad, you know, you know what you're doing because you know, we're like what nine or 10 growing up. Mm -hmm. Like we don't know, we don't know much. We don't know like the importance. You know, they know us. Do you feel me? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we look up to our parents for all that stuff. And so, um, my dad would always give me like this haircut and looking back on it now, it looks like I have a helmet on my head because oh, that, no. that hairline was so close to my eyebrow. It was the battle bull. It yo, seriously. I'm a 3D bowl cut, but an apple. <laughs> I'm sick. But but what I wanted to say was that um during the winter when I got old enough, probably like fourth or fifth grade, my dad was like, all right, so for the winter and the fall, you can grow your hair out, but only on the top. So my dad let me get a faux hawk. Um, on, yeah, and it was it was it was kind of lit because. Um, it was like a little faux hawk and not a lot of kids in my neighborhood had it. Not a lot of people in my school had it. And, oh, yeah. you know, I was this little Afro-Latino walking around with this, you know, with the fade on the sides. You say, you know, I got that new new. You don't know about it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. As you know, my hair is curly. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I got the Afro. And so when I had the little mohawk, <laughs> the the actual like mohawk portion of it would curl. So I looked like the type of, uh, what, a dinosaur I don't know oh. what dinosaur is called, but it was like. I know which one you're it, talking about. The one with the little <laughs> helmet on top, with the bone helmet. The oh. <laughs> yeah, but it looked like the cool thing was to save myself was I tried to trick myself into thinking that it looked like a wave, like two waves clashing together. So oh, I was like, bro. oh, yeah. Those ain't waves. Bro. Those are the wrong type of waves. I said, <laughs> I said, uh, that's yeah. ground, not drip right there. I said, uh oh. <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit, Bucko. I said, man. I and said, I thought <laughs> I thought I was the coolest kid. I was like, man, ain't nobody gonna touch me with this faux hog. You know what I'm saying? I had that little hook in the back too, and I was like, Yeah, we we living it. We living it up, man. But oh man, I don't think that uh I don't think that went well when I look back on it. <laughs> I mean you're grown into your afro now, that's what's up. But it was a stage. There was a stage in between. You know how middle school is like one of the worst few years of your life? Almost de- uh, it was the worst. <laughs> what haircut did you have when you were in middle school? Was it still yeah. that skeeter haircut? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The worst part was that I didn't go see like an actual barber until eighth grade. So like I would always have my mom do it. Because like when my pops cut my hair, he he messed me up a little bit. He put patches <laughs> in my head. I'd be up. Bro. And my mom would have to like five minutes later and try to save my hair and i'm like "Uh uh-oh i can't walk to school like this bro they said you ain't got no fresh tape or no nothing it's just all the way around you feel me what could you do without mama um literally (laughs) um when i was heck yeah i mean like hey jump to prom like my mama my prom pictures that i have on instagram i was looking cold like she was able Mm -hmm. to tame the afro somehow like had it slipped back you know, my Mexican jeans were showing out. You know, it looked pretty clean. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little but, something, something. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't much. It was, it was, but it was something. And I was really happy that my mom could do that for me. But um, to, to go back to what I was saying, there was this, okay, there was this middle stage. You know how, like, in Pokemon, where you have, like, your, your first, like, the, the Pokemon, and then it the first evolution? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my first evolution was to the perm. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be absolutely real with you. Um, I look like that one dude from that Soul Glow commercial in no, uh, Coming to America. Oh, yeah, I had that oh, very cool. Just let you so oh, I'm sick. And I and the funny turn. thing is, the funny thing is, I thought once again, I thought I was because sh- I was like, hey, ain't nobody got this haircut like me, man. I got this I Soul Glow. I got this. <laughs> Big perm. I got a big perm. <laughs> big perm. Y'all hear me? I'm sick. I can't oh, picture man. you with the perm. Like, it, I'm looking you know, at you right now. I'm like, bro. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because you could, like, see the actual shape of my skull. Or, like, not uh, see it, but, like, you could see like, the outline. 
And I was like, damn, I can't hide this. And everyone's going to know I got a peanut-shaped head, and I can't hide that. Bro, <laughs> um, I think the worst when they go to grip the back of the peanut head, bro. Oh, my <laughs> God, bro. I hate it. It's humiliating. Yeah, they, they hit you right there with the hook, and it's like... <laughs> it got, like, the little toad finger sticking out when they grip the back of your head, and it, like, sticks. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, I just want to eat my lunch, like, like, go to the back of my head, bro. I'm like, you make me mad. And we were young. We didn't know no better. We were just like, hey, what you doing back there? Little did Let we know. me go. <laughs> and here we is, both with our little afros or whatever. You feel me? Uh, I mean, my afro. Okay, so the, the thing that really turned it into the afro was like towards the end of eighth grade, uh, my homie James, um, he gave me a pick. Mm. And for those of, for, for our audience that doesn't know, our, a pick is a magical type of comb that people used to rock or use. Um, that's very, uh, it has some wide tooths in it. And so when you pick out your hair, you know, um, it adds volume to it. And so I had that perm and he cut my hair and he said, Hey, take this, go to the, go to the mirror and go, uh, pick out your hair because, um, it was during, it was a home, uh, haircut type deal. Mm -hmm. And so I went up, I went up to the mirror and I was like, all right, sure. And I started picking it out. And my eyes just couldn't believe what it was comprehending because said, wait a minute, my said, my afro, is. my afro doubled in size. Like you know, the, at the end of the Grinch, like how his heart tripled in size that day. Like oh, my so afro tripled in size. Grinch to black hair, but I get was, what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was wild, and I was like, "Hey, man, this is this is wow." I was like, "This is really cool." Can I keep my hair like this? He's like, "Yes, but you mm. got to maintain it. Always keep that pick on you." So as I you know, like. Yeah, as you know, like, throughout my life, like, uh, or even in college, like, as you can see, like, I always had, like, my pick on me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I always had it. Um, but so, yeah, so that's when I started picking out the afro. And then the thing is, my dad had to sit down and have a talk with me in, like, the 10th grade because my afro became a helmet. It was covering my ears. And, like, you could see it from a mile away. Oh, like, my friends. I see yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the terrible acne and the huge ass afro. The afro around the ears, that man said, you know. I so I, that, yeah, that man. The whole helmet. Mm -hmm. It was it was wild. Um, I But my dad was like, hey, you need to cut that down. So I said, all right. So I went around and I went to this one barber shop called Chops. And mm. it was pretty cool. And it was like my first legitimate like barber shop experience. Like I sat down, we were cracking jokes. And I think it was around the time that Big Sean released his album, I Decided. Um, and he released it. And, and they were talking about Eminem on, on one of his tracks. And you're like, bruh, that one track that has Eminem on it? We were like, yeah. He's like, totally murdered Big Sean. Like, that wasn't even his song anymore. Like, he took everything from that man. And I was like, damn, y'all feel that way? You be I'm having the best conversations in a barbershop, I'll tell you. Seriously. Like, the old heads, they probably got some of the best stories in there. Because at some points, the barbershop don't even feel like it's just your average barbershop. It's really, like, therapy. Like, when things ain't going right in your life, like, the barbershop is one place that you could look for for, like, positive black men in your life. Just to, like, interject. Right. Not to, like, stop your entire story, but, like... No, no, I was okay. about to end right there. No, keep on with you, what you're saying. that Because that's, that's true. Like, I feel like that's a sense of therapy that they have for black men like you get to sit down you get to talk about your your deals and then you get advice on it from the old heads because mm -hmm. especially for me like my barbershop like the person who's cut my hair since like i was like probably eight he's basically been with my family like my entire life like that's basically like my uncle you feel me like that's my uncle eddie and every time i go <laughs> up there like he don't charge me like more than maybe like 15 20 to get my hair cut just because, like, he knows that, like, as a college student or as, like, a student in general, he's like, listen, I know you ain't got that much of an income, so let me just help you out. And so every time he does something for me like that, I pay it forward for, like, the next person that goes in to get the haircut, you feel me? So it just becomes That's a soup and just, yeah, just black men helping black men out. Go ahead, Brown. Go ahead. That's mm -hmm. what's up. I, have uh, to. I, I know... Um... When I was growing up, my dad always made sure, like, hey, if you're going to tip the barber, because you always got to tip your barber, because they, they save in your life. Like, you know, they, as I said in the you intro. Make they, or break. Were, yeah, make or break. You got game or you don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can mm. really help you out. And so my dad was like, when you tip, which you should, when you tip, make sure, that, make sure that you give them the tip 
that uh, best sizes out your afro or your your uh, haircut. And so, um, for example, like if I had a pretty good like the haircuts is twenty five dollars. If I had a pretty good haircut, if if the deal was good, if it looked good, then I give them like four or five dollars. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Five dollars tip, yeah. If it was not that great, uh, three dollars. Like yeah, two dollars, yeah, three two dollars. Yeah, three two dollars. And then if it wasn't great, there was no tip at all because a that's a bad haircut. But then again. Don't leave the chair until you're satisfied, you know? I hear you. Mm-hmm. Got to double check in that mirror, man, because the second you walk out and there's a patch in your head, you're going to be after it. Yo, fix this for me, you feel me? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Speaking of which, what is the worst haircut you have ever gotten, bro? Oh, okay. Oh, man. I said I could start if you want me to. No, okay, I... <laughs> I have one in particular, but go ahead. You do you. I'll I'll, I'll add. I've been talking too much. Mine, how do I even explain? All right, so, bro, basically, all of the sides bald fade, right? Both sides of the back bald fade. No tapers, just, you know, clean up the top, clean up the sides. You feel me? I got the mini high top on top, right? Mm -hmm. Now, take the mini high top. It's like a rectangle. Slice that rectangle in half. Burst fade the sides. That's what I had, bro. It was like a mohawk, slanted, high top, bro. My barber done messed me up. I told him that I just wanted, like, a little afro taper. And when he started, like, cutting my sides for, like, the bald fade, I was like, oh, something ain't going right. And then once he put that little slant when he went to shape up my hair, oh, it was ugly. I looked like, uh, you know the Pizza Hut logo? (laughs) That's basically what was on top of my head, bro. I was pissed. I was pissed. There was no now, way we could revive it. <laughs> now, now, my question is, how much did you pay for for that haircut? I mean, that's my uncle. <laughs> I, think you know, <laughs> I said, I said, oh, I said, oh, I want to. Ooh. <laughs> I said, if you want um, my man. uncle, ooh, I'll beat you up. But, you know, I left a fair, uh. Eighteen dollars for a haircut I didn't want. I was pissed. You, you, you got to do what you got to do, man. Um, I got roasted that day. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> like as soon as you left the barbershop, some kid was like, "Hey, bro, what said, land landed on what's your forehead?" On your head? He said, "You representing Pizza Hut? You sponsored Pizza Hut now?" I said, "All right, bro." Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So the worst haircut that I've ever gotten. I don't know if we can top that, but uh, yeah, the worst haircut I've ever <laughs> the worst haircut I've ever gotten uh, was about a year ago. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, about a year ago, around this time, or no, I think it was yeah, yeah, around this time, about a year ago. Um, so, as I said, I talked about my friend James already. Um, James was, you know, kicking it, just, you know, taking care of business, and I was like, hey, James, hey, can you cut my hair sometime? And, and he was like, uh, actually, man, I, I'm, I'm kind of busy with work. I, I don't think I can cut your hair. And I was like, all right, that's cool. And, and I was like, hey, so do you think you can set me up with somebody or something? He's like, yeah, I can set you up. I know a good guy. He just opened up, uh, opened up his barbershop not too long ago. And I was like, oh, for sure. Where's it at? And he gave me the address. And I texted the dude. And I said, hey, you going to be in here on this day? And he's like, yeah, I can cut you at this time. And I said, all right. I walk into the barbershop after getting off the phone with my grandfather. Mm-hmm. and I told my grandfather, I said, yeah, I'm about to get a good cut, you know. Uh, James said that he knows Oof, he knows a guy, known. and <laughs> and, this guy, <laughs> and this guy knows what he's doing, and I said, all right, cool, or, and, and I was like, all right, yeah, he's going, he knows what he's doing, and then so uh, my grandpa was like, all right, cool, sorry, my mind got jumbled, but so um, mm-hmm. I walked into the barbershop, and it looked like it just opened, like a facility that had just been reopened after a fumigation oh. thing. Like, like the walls were messed up. Like you could see the air vents. I was like, "Am I Ooh. about to get stolen? What's going on?" He said, this is Sam <laughs> right here. He said, "Uh oh." There was just this one black Luke Cage looking motherfucker sitting there in the chair, and I was like, "All right, well, he looked like he can cut, but he was bald." And you know, when you walk into a barber shop, you, oh, see, you know, you, you want to pick see how the bald nice barber. <laughs> If he has See, waves, yes. If he got like a clean beard lineup, yes. But that's where you messed up. You picked the guy with no hair to cut your hair. What sense does that make? You? 
Wait, no, hold on. Here's the thing. <laughs> Stop saying my name. Oh yeah, you're right. We're gonna have to bleep that out. My bad. We got to bleep that out. No, no, no. But but here's the thing. Um, <laughs> there there was a. He said that he had 20 years experience. His 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 beard didn't look bad. As I said, he he looked like he was a Luke Cage, uh, stunt double. Like he didn't look bad. And I was like, all right, bet. And we were talking, sitting in the chair. You know, I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm about to go to college, studying criminology. You know, he's like, all right, bet. That's what's up. He's like, uh, I have a, my, my wife is a lawyer, actually. And I was like, oh, word? Put me in contact, you know? And so we were just chopping it up. And, you know, he cut my sides and the back and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, he brings out the squirt bottle. You know what I'm saying? And uh, for a lot of people, when you spray the squirt bottle, um, the, your hair stays the same. It just gets moisturized. For me... When your hair gets hit with that spray bottle, like my hair begins to condense into like this little, this this small patch of hair. Like you know those, those like extra like Afro Latino curls, like mm-hmm. those Puerto Ricans and stuff. I had that going on. Oof. And so then he started cutting it in the shape of the Afro, and I said, "Oh, oh. like yeah, I said, there's, there's there's nothing I can do." And then mm-hmm. uh, he he lined me up. And I said, it's not bad. All right. And then he's like, all right, uh, I'm going to keep cutting around the back. And we were just having a conversation. And then I was like, he spun me around one time. And then I looked in the mirror and he was like, yo, this is what it looked like right now. And I said, okay, cool. Two minutes later, all right, you done. And I said, what? What do you mean I'm, I'm done? Like, what are you talking about? But I, I couldn't say too much more because, you know, I didn't want to get my, I didn't want to get my ass beat. <laughs> because, so that's you know, your barber. he's this right. Dude, this dude was cutting for 25 years and I looked at my side. My fade was terrible. I looked around the back. The taper was bad. I looked at the afro. The afro didn't have the right shape and the lineup was crooked. Oh my God. Man, that man destroyed I, his own career for this it, man's 25 years of experience. And you want to know what's the worst about this? Huh. The worst thing? I said, how much is that going to be? 45 and, No, he said 20 and I said, or 25. And I said, bet, I only have 40 on me. I have 20 and 20. Uh, do you have cat change? And he's like, actually, no, I don't. Uh, you didn't. You didn't give him $40. Hey, man. No. You know what? <laughs> that boy got robbed. You know, I got, I got so robbed. But here, there's a... <laughs> there was anybody else in the shop that you could have... There was nobody change. else. It was just him. He just opened. He said, our grand opening is next week. I said, I bet. I want to see how long you stay open. Champurado, this is all your fault. It, you know, there what? ain't nobody in there. You went to the bald barber. You in trouble. It was my homie James, though. My James, nah. my homie James set James me up. Didn't tell you to go to that man. He said go to the shop. Nah, because he was the only one in there. That was the dude. I had a text message with him. We were texting back and forth just to clarify who was who. Oh. <sighs> That is tough. That is extremely tough. Speaking but of which, what oh, texture go ahead, go ahead. does your friend have? What hair texture is it? Is it more like mine or is it more like yours? Uh, It's more like mine. Oh, so yeah. I don't even see the problem here. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, Should yeah, yeah. You yeah. cutting your hair then. Exactly. Uh, but I was like, I was, I didn't, no, bro, I didn't even, I didn't. Listen, we're but past he... those times. You're safe now. Kind of. We're in, <laughs> you say we're, we're in quarantine. Like, hey, it it wouldn't even matter if I got a bad haircut because everything would just grow back. But there's there's a second part to that story. And I'll make it quick because I've been talking for too long. My bad. <clears throat> Go ahead. But, but, but so um, I go to another barber about a week later. Mm-hmm. Right. And I go into the barbershop. And I didn't eat like uh, lunch the day like that 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 day. Like so, it was like I ate breakfast and then I went out and it was lunchtime and I hadn't eaten yet. So I walked up on this one dude in the barbershop and he's like, "Yo, why are you shaking so much?" And I was like, "No, no, no, I just I just wanted I just want a haircut. Like that's all I want. Like I literally looked like I was starving for a haircut. I was like, bro, that's all I want. Like Listen, my lips man, were white. Just shoot me up with a haircut right now, man. Just, 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 come on, it's been a week. Just, I need a haircut. Man. It's been a week. <laughs> Give me the haircut." <laughs> But but so he was like, all right, sure, I can give you a haircut, but you need to keep your hands where I can see them. And I was like, what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt you. 
But uh, I was like, all right, whatever. And so I'm sitting down, and I'm getting the haircut, and he sees what happened from the previous barber. And he says, oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. And I said, what's up, man? He's like, this is a homicide. What What did he do to you? What happened? <laughs> and I said, I said, <laughs> look, man, times, times are tough. We make, we, we do stupid stuff sometimes. He said, I'll say, like, what you doing? Man, you looking like a Hebrew slave. And I said, damn. Oh, no. <laughs> I said, damn. <laughs> Oh. When another and barber way, tells you that you went through it, man, you went through it. <laughs> it was bad. And and by the way, that is not politically correct. Let me just say that right now. I do not agree with what he said. But yeah, man, hold on, Nick Kenny. You're going to yeah, get us was... off the air right quick. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny. It was funny at the time. And and so, um, sorry. But so, dude actually revived my afro. Like, it looked good. The taper was good. Like, he said what I had. It was a smaller afro, but an afro is an afro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and the cool thing is the dude was like, all right, um, so that'll be 20 or that'll be like $25. And I said, all right, bet. And I said, oh, wait, can I hit the ATM real quick? He's like, yeah, sure. Just leave your shirt or something. And I was like, I'm going to leave my coat because, as you know, I like dress up and all that stuff. So I was like, I'm going to leave my coat right here. So I went around the corner for the ATM. And you know how I lost those $40 the other time? Uh, but that other barber I lost forty dollars. Dude, dude came back, or I came back to from the ATM when I asked for twenty extra dollars. I came back with forty dollars because the ATM spit out an extra twenty dollars. It was an ATM error. Yeah, and yeah. I said, I said forty dollars, but I only asked for twenty, and it didn't even charge my account the extra. And so. I feel like that was God saying, "Hey, bro, the other hey, barber hoes." It all comes back gonna, around, but that's yeah, yeah, we're going another day. But it all comes back around, my brother. And so I, I gave him a nice tip and all that stuff. You know, I, I tipped him tw- like he was twenty five. I tipped him thirty because he he actually saved my life and saved mm-hmm. my game. And he said, "You know what? You tip well." And he handed me his card, and he said, "Whenever you want to come by, come come by and get that haircut." And I said, "Bet, cool." That's respect. Yeah, yeah. He value you as a client. You still go to him? Uh, I sometimes, and I say sometimes because he started upping the prices too much. Mm-hmm. I asked him to fix up my eyebrows, and he said, "All right, that's an additional ten dollars." And I said, "What? Some eyebrows? From my eyebrows? Don't get me wrong. What you do to him? Looking. No, no, I got the cat scratch. I got the you know the excess hair. We got that thinned out. Like, bro, no he, makeup or nothing. It's just no a makeup slice. or nothing." <laughs> No, no, but here's the thing. The, like, women really pay attention to that. Like, mm-hmm. they really pay attention to how your eyebrows be looking. Because if your eyebrows are nicer than hers, she's going to want to get tips. And then she's going to want to talk to you about it. Same with eyelashes, <laughs> bro. Same with eyelashes. Exactly. Exactly. Said, and oh, so, these, these natural. These are the natural that's butterflies. What, you feel me? Yeah, you just, like, you, you just close your eyes a couple times, you know, Oops. fluttering them around. You know, show them off. But, but um, that... That stuff right there, like those those key items, those key, you know, things that you need to structure, like th- that's important for, mm-hmm. for trying to revive your game. A and so, bit, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why I was like, all right, fine, 10 extra dollars, whatever. But then I stopped going because then it got a little bit too much. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. Like, I'm and not going to say that. College budget. Yeah, college budget. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's see. Like, um, I guess, I guess my next question is is how do you choose your barber? I mean, my barber. I feel like I always get put onto a barber. Besides, like, you know, the one who I have in the family. But like, for me, when I started going back to college, uh, I didn't want to keep driving back from my city back to like my college. So I said, you know, what? I need to find a barber here. I need to find him now. And so one day, I wake up from my dorm. I go into the bathroom. I see this barber giving haircuts in the bathroom, in the top oh. third story, giving haircuts in the bathroom. I was so confused because I needed to brush my teeth. I look in and I see a whole barber set up, set up, and I was just like, "Whoa!" It's like, "What is going on here?" I'm like, "You doing haircuts?" He was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Can I get an appointment real quick?" He was like, "Nah, I'm all booked up." He's like, "I gotta go," and I was like, "All right, bet." My room. I get a knock on my door. Bro was like, "Yo, he could catch you up real quick for a lineup. He got you for ten dollars." I was like, ten dollars." I said, that's smooth, because, you know, I had a, uh, like, this ABC conference to go to the next day, you feel me? That's right, so yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, so I was like, that's hella convenient. 
And so I go, I get my hair cut. Bro cut me up real nice. So I was like, bet the next time I come back, I'm going to get like an actual haircut from me. And so I go, I get my haircut for real. Bro's paying attention to like the level of like how I want my afro tapered. Like he knows how to blend the size. Like he, he trimmed up like my mustache and like my facial hair and stuff like that. You feel me? Like the little stuff. And he only charged me like 20 bucks. You feel me? And so that right. was like super smooth. And that's the yeah, barber yeah. I ended up putting you on to. Oh, it's the same barber. Sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I was like, it all kind of like links in. Cause like, even though he's like a student, he still need to make his money. And like, I don't really want to drive back to my city. So I go back to him cause he know how to cut. And so I'm like, yo, I said it all worked out in the end. So that's how I picked my barber. I'm like, if you cut well, the price is nice. Like I can somehow relate to like your struggle or just your situation in general. Then I rock with you. That's what's up. That's respectable. Yeah. Those are the main three yeah. things from. But how um, about you? Personally, when when I'm looking for a barber, um, I don't mean to be that dude who's like puts race above anything or anything like that. But like, when I see a black dude. I automatically think like, okay, he understands black hair. He has oh, to understand you. black hair. You know what I'm saying? Or at least somebody who, who's who been like cutting in the hood or someone who's been cutting for a long time who has like a resume. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, what I do. And, and, and for me, I'm sorry, what was that? You got to have the experience to cut hair. You got to be used to like every different hair texture, basically. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think I think the, the best type of barber though, for me, is those Afro-Latino barbers. And that's mm-hmm. because uh, they understand that our hair, like, although, like, it's so, it's similar to, like, Black people hair because it is Black people hair, there's a different type of texture to it. You know what I'm saying? It's not as yeah. curly or or it is more curly, excuse me. Like, it, it's the, the curls are looser when it's wet. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, it and expands those, out, like, but it also it, condenses yeah. quicker, which is the complicated yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, that, and then... Um, but those are the barbers that I look for because then they understand how to cut my hair and how to keep my afro intact. So that's that's what I look for. But um, also, someone who understands that being a barber is about making money and it's about a business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I got so much respect for people that cut people and have like haircuts or like a barber place so that kids could get off the street and stuff. Like that's that's so respectable. Like mm-hmm. I. I I mess with that like a hundred percent, but there are some barbers that will be like, "Hey, you got to cut by another barber." What's up? Oh yeah, that? they'd be tripping on it. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, that's not like cheating on your lady or anything like that. But it's like I get the uh, loyalty, but it's like, come on, bro. Like, you know, I'm experimenting. <laughs> that's actually how I I uh, entered a little bit of a uh, of a rut my junior year, um, because my sister had taken me to uh, this one place, and this this barber, his name is his name is Suave. This dude was cold, man. Like it was the best haircut that I've ever gotten in my entire life. Like I, how much uh, was it? It was ooh, okay. Hold on. Is that price <laughs> the haircut versus the quality, dog? If it's worth it, it's worth it. It was a thirty-five dollar haircut with a ten dollar tip. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, sir. I said that's. Genius. I have, I have never seen my hair like my my afro blended so beautifully with my fade i have never seen the mm. shape cut so great because you know what he did that a lot of barbers don't do what do you do like he cut my hair picked it out cut it again then picked it out one more time to make sure that there weren't any issues so he spent time with it he spent time he did with homie spent an entire hour on my head to make sure that everything was looking like right you know what i'm saying at that point then it's worth it because my hair has be like 15 minutes max 15 20 but for an hour, that man was inspecting. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and you know, some people some people might say, like, hey, that's too much or that's not cool. Or, like, you know, like, like I got places to go. I'm like, man, if if I got an artist in my presence, I'm going to let the artist do his art. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let mm-hmm. him make his decisions that will impact my life for at least a month. <laughs> I'm like, it's that's your game at risk, bro. I said, you got to mm-hmm. pay the win out here. Mm-hmm. I said, if it ain't the fit, then it's the face. And if it ain't the face, then it's the hair. And if it ain't neither, mm-mm. Mm-mm. you're losing. People ain't looking for personality. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> personality, what's that? That's boo-boo. We don't need that. I said, you got to have money. Play to win. 
Um, but huh. um, to to go a little bit further to to actually make this educational because we we have to make it educational. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, for a minute, I just want to talk about the evolving story of black hairstyles and a lot of our black viewers and or listeners. I know. Y'all know a lot about this. Y'all know what's up. But for our other viewers that want to be educated and want to learn a little bit more, I'm here to tell you some stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, this may take a minute, but it's all going to be worth it. The sources that I comprise this uh, information from, it comes from Thirsty Roots, like my hair, and BBC, the British right, Broadcasting right. Company. Um, so I just want to talk about the evolving story of black hairstyles. Because it's quite long and even predates, you know, the first African slaves brought to the New World in the early 17th century. It's actually believed that over 11 million Africans left the continent between the 16th and 20th centuries due to the transatlantic slave trade. And now, I don't like how they said left the continent. Yeah. They left the continent. I don't know about that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we, wasn't, we didn't necessarily leave by choice, you feel me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that's history for you, quote unquote, but... Yeah, so yeah. Who was this by? This by the BBC, British? Hmm, I'm not surprised. But anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in early African civilizations, you know, hairstyles could indicate a person's family, background, or their tribe, and even their social status. So when men in Senegal went to war, they would braid their hair, and women who lost their husbands in war would mourn by not doing their hair. And I think that that's that's really sad. That's, who you that know hurts. what I'm saying? Yeah. Imagine, like, you lose your husband, but then also you don't take care of your hair. Yeah. Like, that's tough, bro. Um, but just about everything else about a person's identity uh, that could be learned by looking at someone's hair, um, a lot of change during that time, you know. Um, but at the same time, a lot of things stayed the same uh, when we're jumping forward to the 17th uh, century. Today, there's an interest uh, not only in historical roots of many African-American hairstyles, but also in a myriad of new ways to style black hair. Thus, original Africans brought to the U.S. came from the West and Central Africa, and so they didn't have a single origin that African-American hairstyles can be traced from because of Africa's vast size. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. Uh, instead, you know, there's this pan, or there's a general pan-African style that has developed into a range of African hairstyles. And today we can look at the history of African-American history, or excuse me, I repeat myself, and see the full range of, his, of hairstyles that inspired, helped formulate the styles that are uh, available to people who, who have that type of textured hair. So um, the first African hairstyles that we are seeing, that we have been able to see in the new world were variations of traditional West African braiding patterns. These styles had various uses, like hiding grains and even weaving maps onto the heads of slaves so that they could escape bondage, you know? Mm -hmm. These styles, however, were often removed by masters who wanted their slaves to look more European, and we know all about that. For the yeah. next few hundred years, you know, standards of black beauty was measured by European standards. Light skin, small features, and straight hair, which were believed to be the pinnacle of beauty. This caused African Americans to spend an abundance of time working on their hair so it could mimic white hair using harsh chemicals and heating styles and lots of other styling products. Like I used to have a friend who actually used to do this, uh, that, mm -hmm. that would chemically straighten their hair and it'd damage it. And like, she's yeah. such a beautiful lady and like, not she's healthy. a really good friend. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's not healthy for you at all. Yeah, I got a couple I just, friends that still do it too with the texturizers and stuff too, the relaxers. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. It, to it, see. it it really is. Like, it, I mean, it's not that it's sad to see, or it is sad to see, but it's like your hair naturally is so beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. you just got to embrace it. Don't change it for nobody. Mm hmm. Um. Uh, but but so that that friend of mine actually did start uh messing with braids and messing with uh uh natural hairstyles, and I think that her hair actually looks really good, and I think. I hope if she's watching this, she doesn't take offense to like you know me talking about this. But like, um, I hope that she does know that her hair naturally is so gorgeous, and I think that all black women with black hair that actually love to show it off, like that, that confidence, that's that's what just makes it even more precious. You know what I'm saying? Embrace it. Mm -hmm. It's you. We love to see mm -hmm. it. Definitely. Uh, so the trend continued until the 19. Uh, 60s and the 70s and at that time the civil rights movement 
also inspired a cultural movement popularly known as Black is Beautiful, which is true. You know what I'm saying? Like, Black is beautiful. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. I said, not uh, to be, like, boastful or nothing like that, but I mean, like, Black, let me tell you something about Black, man. Mm. I said, man, we might just be out there. I ain't gonna lie. Like, in terms of, like, everybody else, the way that I look at it, Black people, we always gonna be at the pinnacle. Beauty, education, I don't want to say sports, but you know sports, we kind of got that athleticism. <laughs> but just naturally, we was just, like, born leader regardless of whatever they put in our way. Right. And I think it's appropriate to say that um, due to the fact that, like, for history, like, since the beginning of of, the, of our country's founding, like, we were asked to suppress our blackness mm-hmm. because it was seen as, as immoral or disgusting. And I think that it's important for us, especially now, to really appreciate our blackness and, and what we have. You know what I'm saying? Especially like, we need to be like this. Yeah, definitely definitely yeah. and, and that's not to say that like if you're white you're ugly or if, if you're latinx you're ugly or asian nothing like that we're not saying that at all but what we're saying is is that black people have been suppressed with their pinnacles of, of uh, or with their own identification of beauty and and i think that it's important for people that are black to acknowledge their inner beauty because mm-hmm. they weren't able to you know what i'm saying we're being confident for those that couldn't be confident beforehand. Exactly. Not um, in a disrespectful manner at all. Just we want this now, mm. and for our and for future generations too. Right. Um, but during this movement, this was when you know the Afro was first popularized in mass. A huge mane of hair that was teased up by or teased up to emphasize its curliness. Uh, Afros are still seen today, you know, because we both rock them. Um, yeah, you know, you feel me? We out here. You feel me? <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. It's not. Um, and although they are usually on the smaller side, more people are exploring their natural hair. Uh, during the growth of embracing Afro textures in the 70s, traditional braiding patterns were also brought back to the African-American hair. Um, and in today's society, people use West African braiding patterns for cornrows or even adopt a Caribbean style like dreadlocks. Um, other people leave their na- their hair naturally uh, in a smaller afro, which I think is gorgeous as well. Um, and you'll also find people rocking the jerry curls like I did in the eighth grade, uh, straight hairstyles, <laughs> pink <laughs> curls, <laughs> or, or even they might even go bald like my dad. Oh, <laughs> and you gonna put your dad on blast like that? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> And with the popularity of hair extensions, weaves, and wigs, the styles that we have been able to conjure are endless. The Afro textured hairstyle history is, is it's actually just plentiful, and its heritage is reflected in the variety of hairstyles that you see on Black folks to this very day. Um, so that that's the little educational part that we have to put in our podcast. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. love to see it. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else that we needed to get off our chest? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, I think that's it for me, Bucka. All right. Well, um, if you stay tuned uh, after this little quick break, we're gonna bring our new friend in, uh, Kennedy. Or not a new friend, but a a friend that that we've had for quite some time. But we're gonna go ahead and bring her in, uh, for her interview. Uh, so please stay tuned and. Be prepared to learn about what it's like to be a black woman dealing with hair during these times. Fino. I like to rip off mics and clock up dice that roll funny, getting blunted off somebody's home money. Honey's been for me for cheese, ease back. Please keep that weave intact. Best believe the tame and deal be back. Get the bees sex, relax. Fuck a flip from Blockbuster. I'm gonna touch it. Proven who got the ball, Mike Bush. A friendly neighborhood rap hood with good. Now let's start up the session. Kick a rap out till I black out. Check out when I out. Alright, everybody. I would like to introduce y'all to a nice young woman who has made an impact on UCI's campus and spot program. She is wise, fierce, funny, and talented. This particular person is quite knowledgeable on black hair and has done my hair a couple of times. Here comes our friend Kennedy Blackner. Hey, what's up, y'all? Kenny! How are you doing on this fine day? With the coronavirus going on and all that. Good, how are you? 
you know, chilling, just trying to make it through, you know. You know, got my test going on or whatever, but, you know, we're going to push through. We're going to pass. We're going to prosper. Yeah, you know, I got that, you know, that summer class going on or whatever. You feel me? What? Uh-uh. Yeah, but we be struggling through it. Keyword, <laughs> struggling. <laughs> struggling. Speaking All of struggle, right. this hair thing going on, too. You know what? That's that's big facts. That's some, you know, our hairs are, it's hard, it's hard having black hair out here, especially with the sun being so hot. Man, my afro looking thirsty. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Um, so, Ken, I have, a, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. What are your favorite hairstyles to see on black men and black women? Ooh. Okay. So, look. Okay, so for um, black women, I'll say, like, individuals and um, French braids. But, like, French braids. I like the little um, lemonade braids because they're, like, really cute on people. And then, like, box braids are, like, the go-tos. For men, I'd say, like, you know, the typical ways. You know, you got to wear the little do-rag with it. I'm also liking locks. Like, some locks looking, like, very good. Muy bueno. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, ooh. Uh, let's see what else. I don't know what styles do y'all even wear. Like, I'm only seeing like the typical like F boy haircuts. Um, wait, wait, what's the F boy haircut? You know, <laughs> no. It's kind of like. Oh, oh hold on. <laughs> Who's hey, hold on. Oh man. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'll edit it out. It's fine. I'm in trouble. Dang, she didn't come for your whole life. I said, hold on, what you trying to say? It's kind of like Chaparrado's haircut, you know? Like, the like, same sides and the same back. And, like, with a little hair at the top, they might be uh, curly and stuff. This is taper. She like a J. Cole type of dude, you feel me? No, I don't like it. That's, like, the trend in hair. <laughs> she said Hold up. Ooh, a- also, twist on guys. Twist on guys and girls. And, yeah, that's what I, that's what I like. That's that's pretty cool. I'm a little insulted by that one comment, but you know it is what it is. <laughs> she said, "F boys." I said, "Whoa!" I said, "That's <laughs> you, sir." Not Can me. we say that? I think I'm gonna have to bleep that out too. <laughs> F? I said, "F." I mean, everybody grown here. Speaking of which, uh, that brings me to my next question. Ken, when did you first learn how to braid hair? Sorry, you cut out. A- uh, the second part was how long did it take for you to become a master? Ooh, I like that word. Um, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> my mom used to braid hair when I was younger, so like I basically learned from her, and like she'll do it on my head, so I'll just visualize it. And I was like, you know what? Since she doesn't commit all the way to my hair, sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna learn it myself. And that's when I started doing like hair on a little braided doll, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my cousin's hair for the first time for free. And that was a long process. Like, it took me, like, 12 hours. And I was like, okay, you know what? I might not want to do this. But then I was thinking, I'm like, okay, I'm about to be in college. And I need to make some little dollars on the side. I don't have a job yet. And that's when I just started practicing more and more and more. And it's like, as you braid, you kind of get better for each box braid. It's like a process for each. So, yeah. All right, for sure. Did I answer your second question? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay. All right, for sure, for sure. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, I guess. I guess for for uh, my my next question. Um, how do you feel when you see someone who isn't uh, black sporting those hairstyles, like cultural appropriation and stuff like that? Honestly, personally, I don't care unless they look good. Like sometimes. Like, okay, you'll see, like, a white boy with waves. And I'm like, okay, he tried. Like, I guess he's trying to, you know, he probably has a black friend or whatever. (laughs) She said try. Oh, my gosh. He gets an A for effort. It's not that bad. Like, the the thing is, they have to have, like, the look with it. Like, it's just a certain look that you have to have. But um, most of the time, I feel like they're probably trying to embrace it. But they don't give credit. Like, the celebrities and stuff, they don't give credit. But, like. Other people, I mean, I, I haven't had any, like, bad experiences with, like, non-black people wearing our hairstyles. If anything, they really, 
like our culture and they're just trying to um they like our hairstyles like box braids and stuff they're not trying to disrespect us but that's just my experience i don't know about other people so i don't I know hear you. no I definitely it's more of a like oh go ahead go ahead my bad no no go ahead my bad brown sugar go ahead say, say yourself. Say for, uh for you it's more of an acknowledgement than like a diss in a sense yeah all right for sure that's respectable Especially if they get it done by like a black person, you know. If somebody asked mm-hmm. me to do their box braids and they were not black, I was like, okay, girl, yeah, for sure. So, support me. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I I've seen see because this this subject is so topsy turvy and so sensitive because there's some individuals you know that are black like you know like us that will see other people uh, rocking those hairstyles and completely think that they're out of the line or that they're not mm-hmm. paying an homage to black people and have the complete different perspective. That's, that's really interesting. Um, personally, I think hair is hair, but, um, right. but when somebody comes up to me and asks like, Hey, how you get your hair like that? And like, well, give me a whole questionnaire. I'm like, bro, you can just look this up on Google. I, I, I don't even know you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I've had that experience happen on, uh, on our college campus actually uh when i was with our with our other homie who i won't specify because you know on the we're on the air but we we were walking to uh one of the centers that they have on our campus and this bald-headed uh caucasian american looking gentleman um if we're going to be politically correct uh he came up to us and he was like excuse me gentlemen how are you doing and we were like good <laughs> that's I, not like I, one of my professors exactly and that's what's concerning that's but no he he came up and he was like how y'all doing and we were like oh we're doing just fine um what's going on with you and he was like i, I just had to ask how do you get your hair like that and me and my friend immediately looked at each other and we're like oh damn uh but then uh after about 15 minutes of being questioned on how we get our hair like that what is our <laughs> texture like what shampoos do we use and what combs do we use in order for us to get our hair with or to add so much volume to our hair we were finally like all right bro well thanks anyway he's like thank you for sitting there and and actually letting me ask these questions uh i'll see you guys later and he walked away and then my homie was on the side and he was like hey bro i didn't mean to be somebody's experiment like that's that's goofy <laughs> and i was like mm. you know um I don't know what to say about that because it was like he genuinely wanted to learn but then again it's like it's not my job to teach you you know what i'm saying yeah I hear you. it was like he was observing you for like his own interest i guess it wasn't necessarily like out of concern it was just more of like a general interesting question if that's how yeah. i put it yeah. yeah yeah which is a microaggression in itself but people don't necessarily realize that which is why At the same time where it's like where it's not our job to like educate people on these kinds of things, we kind of have to if we don't want it to happen to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. So, Kenny, do you like to wear your hair naturally? Yeah, but I mostly like box braids, though. I mean, is that that's kind of considered natural, though? Is it? I don't know. But, um, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I cut my hair for a reason on my birthday, so I can wear it natural and, like, embrace the natural styles and stuff like that. So I like it. It's, a, it's like a so confident good. boost and, like, a kind of empowering. So, yeah. How did it feel to uh, cut your hair for the first time? Or was that your first time cutting your hair? Other than trim it? Yeah, it was, like, a it. big chop. So, yeah, it was, like, my first time, like, really oh, snipping away. So, well, congrats. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you. Embrace it. And it and I, and I just want to say that it looked really really nice. So you know, good job. It does. Plus. Hey. Yeah. I love it. Uh, which leads me to my next question for you, uh, Ken. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you how do you keep your hair all kept and nice and beautiful? What what's your secret? What you do? What you got to do? Um, you're doing a lot right now with the compliments, my G. I said, hold on, you really <laughs> really gassing her up, my G. I said, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just trying to get my hair to look like hers, kind of, because, uh, as I said, we got, like, the Sahara Desert on my head. Like, yeah, I you don't want to be an F-boy or nothing like that, you feel me? <laughs> Come on, now. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. Right, you need to slow your road. <laughs> you know, um, get some waves or something, man. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking some questions, bro. Um, I'd say, I'm happy y'all didn't hear my voice go out. That kind of sounded, <laughs> I'm like, it probably sounded like I got the virus or something, but no. Um, what was the question? 
<laughs> just how what is your hair routine how do you keep your hair all kept so what i do is yeah yeah I what you do it. like i have to oh, really? since i'm like type 4c like either my hair is going to be like a sponge and like just be i don't know if you even seen this but like it'll just be like an afro just like a straight afro and mm. like if i don't want that and i want the little curls then i'll just twist it up and wear it for like a few days in a scarf or something and then i take it out and it's just all curly or whatever Oh, okay. When I said routine, I meant specific products because I'm. Oh, you want specific on. products? Okay, I got yeah, you. I want products. Oh so damn. I use, um, <laughs> it's this cream of nature honey. Let me get it real quick. I said, let me. Run. I'm taking <laughs> notes. Right I said, I know this is the interview, but hey, I'm taking notes right along with. Oh, <laughs> also, how do you feel? How do you feel about spending so much on hair products? Oh, I don't mind. I love it. It's for it's a necessity, you know. I because okay, a lot of people well, complain about the cost. Well, I mean, there's like non-expensive good products. Like the product I'm about to plug you right now is non-expensive. So it's called um Cream of Nature Pure Honey, and the whole line is good. Use a twisting cream. Use a detangler, and um also to like hold your twist in, I use Shiny Jam Conditioning Gel, Extra Hold Honey Extract. So. That's basically what I use. Like, it's a go-to. I bought so many of the um, Shiny Jams. Like, I probably spent, like, $100 already. But it's a good material. For product. Okay. So, you, so you spent about $100 on your hair products just to keep your hair looking all nice and kept. Is that right? Like, every six months, probably. It's just, oh, okay. it all just builds up. That ain't bad, then. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Um... Yeah, because you showed me that one that one jar, and I remember you used that to braid my hair one time uh, during Christmas break, I think. Oh, that's or another no. one. Oh, okay. I, yeah, okay. that's another one. That's not this um, shining gem. That's the um, what's that called? I forgot it's another jam, but I don't really like that because I use it on your hair since your hair texture is like more, it's looser than mine, mm -hmm. so it won't hold my hair. But like, did it kind of hold yours? No, it held my hair pretty well. Okay, so yeah, that product's gonna help. I mean, it doesn't help my hair, but it's still a good product to use because it conditions it well, and then like it's kind of oily, so your hair is getting moisturized. How much do you charge to get uh your hair done? Cause I'm trying to get my hair done right quick. You feel me? Since <laughs> you're a dude and you don't really require much, like you don't want a whoa. boxer. You, you want boxer? Whoa, whoa, or? whoa! <laughs> whoa! She said I don't deserve any. She said I don't require much. That's tough. Because box braids, I charge only $50. That's not even expensive. Oh. And like... <laughs> That's two haircuts. <laughs> but you're not getting box braids. You're probably getting twists, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I'll, how much I'll, is twist? How much hair do you have? How thick is your hair? It's pretty thick. It's mighty thick. I'm going to be real. <laughs> it's, uh... It's some tough stuff to work with. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, then we'll do 20. Okay, okay. That's I can work with 20. All right, babe. 20 Dang, we just had a deal <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah, you just witnessed the whole deal go down. So when we all come back, you know, when I come back looking fresh with the crispy lineup and the twist, hey. don't say nothing. Hey. Mm. If we come back. Oh! Don't Ooh. say that. I'm coming back. So y'all see, I'm going to be there. Party <laughs> Corona till September. Party <laughs> Rob is here to stay. <clears throat> that body count is. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's getting up there. Um, um, Ken, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. What tips could you give other black folks that have not quite figured out how to maintain maintain their hair? Because, as you know, it's like a it's like a long process. I mean, I've been alive for over nineteen years, and and I still haven't figured out how to you know, deal with my hair properly. So what, what would you recommend for people to learn how to maintain their hair? Protective styles emphasized. You have to protect your hair because it helps with the ends. I also say moisturize like all the time. For example, if you have twists or something that's like protective, oil your scalp um, for like regular loose hair or like an afro like yours. You also need to moisturize that. I'll say like a leave-in conditioner. Because you don't want your hair to be super dry and brittle and break off. Um, also, I would say tie your hair up at night. 
with a satin like do rag, a bonnet, something like that, just to keep everything in and not to dry your hair out. Can't forget right. the pillowcases either. Them satin pillowcases be saving lives. You have a satin pillowcase. I got two of them. See, so don't bougie. 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 We sleeping good. <laughs> <laughs> We don't See, need I, one of those. Uh, <laughs> How your hair up? <laughs> I do both. I got, I got the do rag and the setting. So pillow what's case. the setting for? You need to have a do rag to look cute. Because it's extra protection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I said my hair break easy. I need it. This man hard headed. Jeez. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> All right, Ken. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, just kidding. Um, oh. thank you. For what? Like the question, or like, are you, are you just in general? Yeah, just speak what you want to say. I just honestly want to just say thank you for having me. Low key honor, like high key honor, actually. And I was like, wow, like y'all want me on your show? Like me with hair? I just kind of learned this little process, but I really appreciate it. So, and I'm proud of y'all. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, we just started. <laughs> And you're the first one on the podcast, so hey, <laughs> we here. You're the, the first guest. I mean, I'm a humble person. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the podcast and kicking it in the kitchen. Hope to be cooking with you next week for another topic. This is Brown Sugar, also known as BS, and Sean Plurado signing off. Stay greasy. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and catch us in the kitchen weekly. If you like this podcast, let us know in the comments below. And don't be afraid to drop a like. You won't get burned. Adios.